Are you woke? Do you even know what the word woke means? Well, don't worry if you don't, you're not alone. A recent YouGov poll found that 23% of us say that we are not woke, while 12% say that we are. 59% of respondents don't understand what the term means at all, and half of this group have never even heard it being used. Of those who claim to understand the definition of woke, only a third describe themselves as such, with more than half rejecting the label. But hang on a minute. Doesn't the dictionary say that all woke means is to be alert to injustice, especially racism? I mean, if that's the case, then surely we're all woke, myself included. If only it were that simple. If that's all the word meant, then YouGov surely would have found that 99% of people call themselves woke. But in truth, the term has been through so many different, different stages of evolution, it's become a lot more complicated. And whether we like it or not, the word now has ideological connotations that simply cannot be wished away. So if you've ever wondered why debates around the term woke cause so much anger and confusion, this is why. When everyone is using different definitions, there can be no sensible argument at all. Just continual mutual misunderstandings which are apt to spiral out of control. So with that in mind, let's delve a little deeper. What does woke mean? Let's go back to its origins. Its relationship to civil rights goes back to the early 20th century when the phrase emerged in African-American vernacular. It was a metaphor, the idea of waking up to the reality of one's own subjugation. The Jamaican political activist Marcus Garvey, who died in 1940, adopted this metaphor in his famous rallying cry, wake up Ethiopia, wake up Africa. Some even date the origins of this usage back to the wider wakes, an anti-slavery paramilitary movement formed by supporters of Abraham Lincoln's Republican Party in 1860. So how did we go from the metaphor of waking up to being woke? Well, in Barry Beckham's 1971 play Garvey Lives, the notion of waking up to injustice became modified into the now familiar colloquialism. As one character puts it, I've been sleeping all my life, and now that Mr Garvey done woke me up, I'm going to stay woke. The term enjoyed a resurgence in 2008 due to Erica Badu's song Master Teacher, Stay Woke, and was taken up by the Black Lives Matter movement in 2013. Writers in the media started using the word with glee. It soon became mainstream, and we were inundated with, with articles such as Keeping Your Classroom Woke, Becoming Woke in the Wake of Me Too, and The Woke Black Person's Guide to Talking About Oppression with Family. In 2016, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey appeared on stage in a Stay Woke t-shirt. And in 2018, the head of the Comedy Awards at the Edinburgh Fringe, Nika Burns, launched the festival with a speech in which she declared she was, quote, looking forward to comedy's future in the woke world. So with all these public figures and journalists being woke and proud of it, it's very strange that recently some of these same types of people have tried to claim that the word is just a slur concocted by right-wing reactionaries. Here's Afiwa Hirsch in The Guardian, for instance. Today, the person using the word is likely to be a right-wing culture warrior, angry at a phenomenon that lives mainly in their imagination. Well, someone ought to tell her colleagues at The Guardian, because they absolutely love the word. We've seen headlines such as, Can a woke makeover win Barbie and Monopoly new fans? And, My search for Mr. Woke, a dating diary. And, Why are some Americans woke online, but not in real life? Maybe the writers at The Guardian are simply a bunch of right-wing culture warriors. Who'd have thought it? So let's recap. The word woke was originally associated with the concept of waking up to injustice and went mainstream sometime in the mid-2010s. At the time, it was used as a form of self-identification by those who have a particular obsession with identity politics and subscribe to the ideology we, we might call critical social justice or leftist identitarianism. This changed the perception of the word in the public consciousness, because now being woke wasn't just about standing up to racism, which virtually everyone would support. It came with a baggage of a whole other belief system. So these days, when people describe themselves as woke, it's difficult to tell what they mean. On the one hand, they could simply be saying that they are alert to injustice. Great. Nothing wrong with that. But for the activists who appropriated the word in the mid-2010s, they are advancing a very specific ideology, one that can be summarized in the following four categories. Firstly, censorship. The woke are informed by the postmodernist notion that our understanding of reality is constructed through language. They are convinced that words can be a form of violence and that censorship 
either by the state or social media tech giants or societal pressure, you know, what we call council culture, is therefore necessary to guarantee social justice. Secondly, power. The woke maintain that society operates on the basis of invisible power structures that only those who are trained in critical theory are qualified to detect. Denial of such structures is taken as further evidence of their existence, as anyone who would deny them is likely to be benefiting from the privileges they afford. Society, therefore, must be reconstructed in order to guarantee equality of outcome rather than equality of opportunity. In other words, equity rather than equality. Then identity politics. The woke see people in terms of their group identity first and foremost, rather than their individual qualities. Race, gender and sexuality, as opposed to class or economic disparities, are taken to be the determining factors when it comes to mapping the power structures that undergird society. This is why intersectionality plays such a significant role within this ideology. It's also why the woke aren't really left-wing at all, because you can't really be left-wing unless class and economic inequality are your priority. In fact, I would argue that the, the woke obsession with predominantly middle-class concerns situates them more to the right, but that's a debate for another time. And finally, lived experience. Now, one of the key factors of enlightenment thinking is, that the, is the prioritization of evidence-based epistemology rather than that which is grounded in faith, superstition, or intuition. The woke movement, what we, we might call the counter-enlightenment, rejects objective truth in favor of a lived experience, what we used to call anecdotal evidence, which presupposes that there are multiple ways of knowing. You'll have heard this idea when people talk about my truth. You'll remember after Meghan Markle's interview with Oprah Winfrey, she was caught out for making statements that were demonstrably false. And Piers Morgan pointed this out on Good Morning Britain, and his colleague Alex Beres Beresford replied, but that's her lived experience as though facts don't really matter and perception is everything. All of which accounts for the tendency among the woke to disregard data if they do not corroborate their existing views and to interpret all forms of inequality of outcome as evidence of systemic oppression. Society, when seen through the woke lens, is interpreted on the basis of group identity. They believe that equity can be achieved through the curtailing of individual freedoms, including freedom of speech. It's based on the belief that Western civilization is wholly underpinned by these systems of oppression, which is why it must be torn down and reconstructed from scratch. That's why every day now we see stories in the news about activists calling for censorship, school and university curricula being decolonized, statues being toppled, streets renamed, and people being punished, sacked, or publicly shamed for failing to toe the ideological line. Taken together, these four ideas of censorship, power, identity politics and lived experience pretty much sums up what it means to be woke. These are the connotations that we can no longer escape. And if we could just pretend that these ide ideologues hadn't hijacked the term, if we could just go back to when the word simply meant being alert to injustice, then we'd all be woke. But try as we might, we can't undo what's been done. So for all the wrangling over definitions, it might be simpler to think of woke as a synonym for anti-liberal. It's complicated, but we do need some kind of shorthand to encapsulate this regressive, divisive, illiberal and authoritarian movement, which has become such a powerful and destructive force in our culture. Woke isn't a perfect word, but it's the best we've got for now.